Hello, I'm Ariel Daniel with the Lowell Observatory, and here's what's in the sky this January. The planet Venus is still on the morning side of the sky, visible just before sunrise. Mercury will be briefly visible for a few days for just a few minutes after sunset, from the 20th to the 24th. The farthest in the sky Mercury will be from the sun, and therefore the best time to see it will be on January 24th. Look near the western horizon, almost immediately above the sun, right after sunset to see it. Jupiter and Saturn are quickly departing from the night sky, and by the late month will be impossible to see. On January 21st, there will be a conjunction between the planets Uranus and Mars. The two planets will be in the direction of the constellation Aries, the Ram. They will be about 2 degrees, or about 4 full moon widths apart. Mars will remain bright in the sky, and Uranus will require binoculars or a telescope to see. Since Uranus is normally tricky to find, this conjunction may present a prime opportunity to catch it with binoculars or a small telescope. This month's new moon will be on January 13th, and the full moon will be on January 28th. On January 2nd, Earth will be at perihelion. This is when the Earth will be the closest to the Sun this year. The Quaternid meteor shower will peak on the evening of January 2nd and the morning of January 3rd. This is normally a strong meteor shower, but it may appear a bit muted this year due to a bright gibbous moon. Meteors from this shower will tend to appear from the direction of the constellation Boetes, the herdsman, near the Big Dipper. A minor meteor shower, the Ursa Minorids, will peak around January 18th. These meteors will appear from the far northern sky between the constellation Ursa Minor and Draco. The autumn constellations such as Andromeda and Cassiopeia set earlier and earlier, although they will still be mostly visible in the early evening throughout the month. January sky is dominated by the winter hexagon, a huge formation of many of the sky's brightest stars. These include Capella in Auriga, Aldebaran in Taurus, Rigel in Orion, Procyon in Canis Minor, and Castor in Pollux in Gemini. I suppose Betelgeuse and Orion is an honorary member. The Winter Hexagon also includes Sirius, the dog star of Canis Major, by far the brightest star in the night sky. The prominent constellations Ursa Major and Leo also begin to rise in the relatively early evening this month. Ursa Major is the Great Bear and contains the Big Dipper, perhaps the most famous formation of stars in the sky. Leo is the Lion and contains the bright star Regulus. Using the Big Dipper, one can easily find the North Star, Polaris. Simply follow a line from the two stars of the edge of the dipper's cup opposite the handle to the next medium brightness star. You'll follow the line in the direction that the cup would be open. If you follow the same line the opposite way, it will take you to the constellation Leo. January is a great time for stargazing with binoculars. The Perseus double cluster and the Andromeda galaxy will still be up for much of the month, especially in the early evening. The winter sky's best sights are high in the sky through most of the night. Many of these objects can be found via Orion's famous belt. Following the line the belt makes to the right will take you to the Hyades and the Pleiades, two of the loveliest star clusters in the sky. If you follow that line to the left, it will take you to Sirius, the night sky's brightest star. Underneath Orion's belt is Orion's sword. In the middle of the sword is the Orion Nebula, the closest massive star-forming region to us and the brightest one in the sky. Elsewhere, in between the constellations Gemini and Leo, is the faint constellation of Cancer, the Crab. In the very center of the crab is another star cluster, the Beehive Cluster. In Ursa Major, the middle star of the Big Dipper's handle is actually two stars, Mizar and Alcor, perhaps the most famous double star in the sky. Mizar and Alcor were used as a test of eyesight in many ancient civilizations. This month's Deep Sky Challenge is the Owl Nebula. This is a planetary nebula, or a gradually expanding shell of gas, and the remnants of a roughly sun-masked star after it ran out of fuel. The Owl Nebula isn't as bright as the famous summer planetary nebulae, like the Ring and Dumbbell, but it's one of the nicest planetary nebulae up in the spring, and it has a certain ethereal beauty to it. You'll need dark, clear skies, and probably a telescope with at least a 6-inch aperture to see it well. You'll find the Owl Nebula just a couple degrees east of Mirok, one of the stars in the Big Dipper's Cup. As a bonus, right next to the Owl Nebula, you may also be able to see the surfboard galaxy, M108. Good hunting! That's all for January's Mars Hill Almanac. Until next time, happy stargazing!